Thank you very much. Let me first uh, thank you, Congresswoman Beatty, for those very kind and humbling remarks, but uh, also for your uh, tremendous leadership on so many issues, not only since you've been here in Congress, but before you, you have come uh, representing your constituents and really uh, looking out for, speaking out for, and working for uh, the most vulnerable in our society. So thank you. I'm really proud of what you're doing with the Congressional Black Caucus, also Congressman Jeffries, for continuing to organize these important uh, sessions really to, to beat the drum and to allow our country to understand what the issues are that the Congressional Black Caucus continues to work on because if, if in fact we address those issues, as you know, that the most vulnerable are, are dealing with each and every day, we'll strengthen America. And so our country will be stronger. So thank you both for making sure that uh, we're doing that. We uh, celebrate tonight the start of Black History Month, but I'd like to reflect uh, quickly again uh, what we're doing tonight on Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s dream of true democracy. In his famous speech, I Have a Dream, let me just uh, quote here what he asked the American people to do. He said, to make real the promises of democracy, now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to open the doors of opportunity to all God's children. And it's the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood, of course, and sisterhood. As I think about his powerful words going into Black History Month and his challenge for America to live up to her highest ideal, we must reflect on how far we've come and where we need to go. Now, of course, the right to vote is the bedrock of our democracy, which Dr. King reminded us of when he said, give us the ballot and we will fill our legislative halls with men and women of good will. So in his honor, we must pass the Voting Rights Advancement Act, H.R. 2867, introduced by a great woman, a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congresswoman Terry Sewell. In 1967, Dr. King explained the underlying nature of the challenges facing our country in his book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community. He talked about these triple evils. He wrote about poverty, racism, and, and war. He said they're the forms of violence that exist in a vicious cycle in our country. He says they are interrelated, all-inclusive, and stand as barriers to our living in the beloved community. So when we work to remedy one evil, we affect all evils. So we must come together as never before to address these issues that infect our communities in order for our nation to move beyond the quicksands of racial and economic injustice. Of course, the first of these evils is poverty, a harsh reality lived every day by more than 46 million Americans. Our Joint Economic Committee report, uh, championed by Congresswoman Maloney and the Congressional Black Caucus, demonstrated and showed that African Americans are disproportionately affected by the scourge of poverty. The poverty rates in our community is 27 percent. One in three African American kids live in poverty. One in five kids in the entire country live in poverty. Poverty rates throughout our country are, are much too high for everyone. And we know how to eliminate poverty. Our system leader, member of the Congressional Black Caucus, great human being, who has worked so hard to eliminate poverty for so many years has come up with a formula that would target resources to those rural and urban communities with the highest rates of persistent poverty. We have our Half in 10 Act, which establishes a national strategy to cut poverty in half over the next decade. That's more than 22 million Americans lifted into the middle class in just 10 years by coordinating local and state and federal anti-poverty programs. Also, our Pathways Out of Poverty Act. This is a comprehensive anti-poverty bill that starts by creating good paying jobs while redoubling our investments in proven programs that empower families to build pathways out of poverty into the middle class. And of course, Dr. King mentioned the second evil, which is racism. While racial barriers and biases are endemic through our society, they're very and most apparent in our broken criminal justice system. It's high time that we work to fix our criminal justice system that far too often fails African Americans. Yes, black lives matter. So today in America, an African American is killed by a security officer, police officer, or self-proclaimed vigilante every 28 hours. That's nearly once a day. 
One in three black men can plan to spend at least some part of his life behind bars, and men of color make up 70 percent of the U.S. prison population. Let me say that again. 70 percent of the U.S. prison population are men of color. That's simply outrageous. Now, we've ended legal segregation. Our first African-American president is serving his second term in the White House. Our Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, serves as our first African-American woman Attorney General. But so much must be done to achieve the dream of liberty and justice for all. Dr. King told us over and over again that we live in two Americas. This was in 1967 in one of his speeches. The Kerner Commission report still describes American society today. And so we've got to really look at our history and, and acknowledge and, and honor the legacy of those who really brought us this far. Look at the statistics and what is taking place now in communities of color and the African-American community. Just shows us what we have to do. We have a long way to go. Dr. King finally spoke of war. He talked about um, the fact that our nation continues to be involved in endless wars and communities are suffering the cost. The Pentagon consumes 60 percent of discretionary spending compared to 11 percent that we spend on education, job creation, and resources to help our young people live the life that they so deserve in terms of being educated and providing workforce training, housing, health care, all the opportunities that are the American opportunities to allow us to live the American dream. So, uh, Congresswoman Beatty and Jeffers, I just want to uh, thank you for allowing us the time to talk tonight. We have real solutions. You have real solutions. Every member of the Congressional Black Caucus has real solutions to end poverty, to end racism, and to end war. And so during Black History Month, we need to recommit ourselves to all of the solutions that members of the Congressional Black Caucus and members of this body and as a whole have uh, if the political will were there so that we can honor the legacy of those who came before us during Black History Month. But by honoring them, we say we're going to pick up that mantle and really address these triple evils once and for all.